Cranes Etc. started in 2004 and this is one of the very first models that was reviewed. It is an old timer German machine. It's the Weserhutter W180. And this model is in a dragline configuration. It comes in a box which has an aged styling. And if we look closely at one end, we see it's by NZG and it's model number 500. Let's weigh it up. We swiftly put it onto the Cranes Etc. weigh bridge and it's about £2.7 ounces or about 1.1 kilograms. Let's now go and unpack the box and see what's inside. Well, as you can see, there's a pair of expanded polystyrene trays and they're in an unusual tall formation and there's an instruction sheet that we'll look at shortly. The top tray has a lid and if we take that off, we can see there are some parts in the top and they are basically everything except the crane. If we then pull off the top section, we can see the crane sitting peacefully in the bottom, which is good as long as it's not in pieces in the bottom. The instruction sheet is very simple and it mainly has a coloured reaving diagram. So here we have the main parts out of the box and we can start by joining jib sections together and these use the old fashioned pinning method. You push the sections together and the system relies on friction to hold the sections in place. And for a small jib like this it works perfectly well. The other main bit of assembly is to attach the two walkways. These are complete pieces and one fits on each side. And you have to line up the tabs on the walkway with holes in the body. It is a little bit fiddly but once it's in place it's okay. Although they are easy to knock out of position. If you follow the diagram the reaving is easy and then you've assembled the complete model and also with its dragline bucket. Let's weigh it up again. We carefully fly the W180 onto the weigh bridge and it's just over one pound 14 ounces which turns out to be 860 grams. The crawler tracks on the model are detailed and a little bit delicate and the track frame has some detail with a plus point being the working rollers. Looking between the tracks you can see there is some structure and it's nice to see a toothed slewing ring underneath. There are large lamps on the roof and the old style cab has windows with distinct frames. W180 appears on the door. The walkways are nice, they're all metal with a very nice mesh floor. On the side there are grills represented in the casting and there's a rear access ladder which is in metal. At the back it looks impressive. You see the nice curved shape of the roof and there's a rear door. There is a chain across the handrails although it's a bit large for the scale. And moving on to one of the nicest details is the Weserhutter name. It's cast into the counterweight and nicely painted. On the opposite side there are smooth body panels and another sliding door. And at the front there is a metal fairlead arrangement. And that's specifically for the dragline. At the front there are various hatches to get access into the machine. And they provide holes for the ropes to come out. Moving up onto the roof and there are a couple of exhaust pipes at the rear from the engine. And the A-frame is modelled in metal. Although it's riveted in place so you can't lower it for transport. The jib sections are nicely cast metal lattices and at the jib head there's a Weserhutter sign and all of the pulleys are modelled in metal. The last part to look at is the dragline bucket and it seems quite large for the model. The attachment points are using jewellery clasps as quick hitches but they're not included with the model. The bucket is a metal piece with nice perforations. One undocumented feature of the model is the ability to detach the body. And to do that you need to go underneath with a screwdriver and there are five small screws to remove. Once the screws are undone you can put the model right side up 
and you need to lift the model just a little bit so you can remove the sliding doors. Otherwise they just fall off and scare the bejesus out of you. Then you can gently lift off the body, just being careful with the various ropes that are still running through the holes in the housing. And now we get to see a good look at the insides and we see there's a fully modelled engine with a chain drive cover. And there's also what looks like a transfer gearbox. And that provides the power to the various winches and functions. So as you can see this is quite an impressive piece of model engineering. And some of the gearing that drive the winches actually works. You can see the axles which are used to drive the model. And they do slide a bit. So on the laughing winch it can get fouled on the gearbox. But all in all if you ever have a problem it's good to be able to get inside. Moving to the crawler tracks and they are delicately clipped together. So you can roll them but you might want to be just a little bit careful. Rotating the crane is smooth and works just fine. And a nice touch on the model is the opening doors. The first one is a sliding door for the driver's cab. And that lets you see the driver's seat and controls. It also gives access to one of the winches. Going to the back and you can open the, the rear door. Although the chain stops it fully opening. But it does give you a view inside and you can see that big engine. On the opposite side of the body is the other sliding door. And although sometimes these sliding doors are just a little bit sticky. They do open fully. And here you get an impressive view of the big gear wheels inside. And also you get access to the other two winches. Another nice touch on the model is the flaps that go over the top of the exit point for the rope. So you can keep things nice and dry if it rains in the display case. To operate the model it's easiest if you remove the walkways. And then you can use the supplied keys to drive the winches. The model comes with the supplied dragline bucket. But for a change we'll detach it by using the quick hitches that we fitted. So we remove the fair lead and the main hoist ropes. And we'll attach a good old fashioned demolition ball. And in this case we're just using a lead fishing weight. NZG did also make another version of the Vaserhutter, and that one was configured to use as a piling rig. If you're interested in seeing it, you can click the link to the video for it. This model was another in the series of historic models by NZG. It was first released in 2003 and even now some 20 years later it still holds its own as a high quality model. It has a very nice level of detailing and there's also some very interesting functionality. It's a great model for anyone interested in old machines and at the time it was rated as excellent.